I don't know much in this world, but I do know Fear Street. So over the next year, I'll be taking you on a fantastic journey over Arlstein's oeuvre while we cover his magical, magical middle-class teenage murder fantasy. Up today, Sunburn. Now, Sunburn was a delightful surprise because as somebody who considers themselves a subject matter expert on Arl Stein, I didn't remember this one so much, but I'm glad I found it. Sunburn is the story of Marla, Sophie, Joy, and Claudia, who the previous summer had been bunkmates at summer camp, but Marla had an annoying sister who obviously had to die under mysterious circumstances. Um, that unfortunately Sophie, Joy, and Claudia had witnessed. Now, twist, cut to the end of the book. Allison is not only not dead, but she has now killed Marla, her sister, because Marla apparently snuck to the gorge to watch her fall to her supposed death. Um, but Allison really wasn't dead. She, this was pre-internet age, so she washed ashore after she fell through the gorge and some kindly family to grin and never thought to call the authorities because some 15 year old girl told them that she didn't remember who she was. Go figure. Anyways, Allison let her hatred build and then decided it was time to act the next summer because Marla, of course, was fabulously rich and her parents were always out of town. And when your parents are out of town, they naturally let you invite your three uh, teenage girlfriends that they clearly don't know to go come spend the week in their palatial beach house. Anyways, there's some ghosts involved, which really turn out to be a teenage boy trying to claim squatter's rights, but the best thing is that there is a random shark attack that kills an Irish wolfhound after Claudia, our fearless leader, who is the protagonist of the story, who coincidentally spends 98% of this book convinced she's in love with a ghost who may or may not be trying to murder them. Turns out he's the teenage squatter. Anyways, let me read you my favorite passage uh, from Sunburn because this is really the MVP of the whole thing. Then, before Claudia realized what was happening, she saw a blur of motion and heard a loud smack. Marla staggered back with an angry cry. It took Claudia a long moment to realize that Dean had slapped Marla. Oh no, Claudia moaned, suddenly afraid. These boys are going to be trouble. Now, Claudia is probably not the one you want in a crisis because one, it took her a little bit to realize someone had smacked her friend, and two, her next thought was, these boys are going to be trouble, as opposed to, oh crap, these guys just hit my friends. Um, knowing Claudia, her next thought was, maybe there goes too. Now, it turns out it's okay, because Dean actually slapped Allison, who was masquerading as Marla, um, because he thought he saw a fly, or sensed her true inherent evil nature. But the other thing that you have to wonder is how good of these girls were friends, because they didn't realize that their friend was dead in a shed, and that her sister was passing herself off as them. It's all very weird. Anyways, this was a pleasant surprise. This is not like a classic Fear Street, like the Cheerleader Saga, or 99 Fear Street, or Wrong Number, or The New Girl, or Who Killed the Homecoming Queen. This was something I just picked at random. And I'm, I'm glad I did, because I got to graphically read about a shark ripping apart an Irish wolfhound while Claudia was caught in Riptide and then having the bits of the wolfhound float through her and then she just falls asleep in the water and then magically is okay. Um, that was pretty special for me. So the only thing that gives me pause from telling you this is an amazing Fear Street is that as the middle of five kids, um, I have four, three brothers and one sister that I know of, um, all still alive and kicking as of now. I've not witnessed any industrial accidents where they've gone missing. Um, anyways, it sort of freaks me out because they all probably, given what happened in this book, they all probably have really good reasons to murder me. So if I'm not back next week, just know I went down cursing your name. Um, and yeah, give this one, if you want, if you can find this at your local Goodwill or, you know, your library or, you know, your older siblings room because they had that skiing accident and for them it's still 1995, I would definitely recommend checking this out. I give this four out of five Fear Streets, even though it didn't technically take place on Fear Street. So tune in next week, 31 years old, two cats, not a lot going on for me, so I will be here and we will discuss another Fear Street. Awesome. Bye.